Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shop With Your Doc, the show where we bring your questions to Providence nutrition experts for healthy eating and grocery shopping tips. I'm your host, Mary Renoff, and here with me today is Christine Sterparo, a clinical dietitian from Pacific Medical Centers in Seattle. Today, we're answering your questions about juicing, cleansing, and detox diets. Oh, so many things. <laughs> Remember, everyone... All of our questions come from listeners via social media. We can be found on Twitter at PSJH and on Facebook under Providence St. Joseph Health. Use the hashtag shop with the doc for a chance to hear your questions on our episodes. Before we start, I want our listeners to know that the information provided during this program is for educational purposes only. You should always consult your healthcare provider if you have any questions regarding a medical condition or treatment. So we're going to get started by welcoming our guest today, Christine. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, uh, Hi, thank you for having me. It's amazing to have you here. Tell our listeners just a little bit about your role here. Um, so I am a dietitian at Pacific Medical Centers. I'm also a diabetes educator. So most of the patients that I see do have diabetes. And then I also meet with uh, people who would like to lose weight or work on improving their diet or have some other uh, medical conditions. Awesome. Well, thank you for all that you do. Well, today we've got so many questions, juicing, detox. I know a lot of these questions are very broad and it's going to be tough for yes. you to kind of narrow it down. So, you know, take a, as much time as you need to. Let's let's dig in. Okay. The first one um, comes from us is what does a detox diet look like? Um, so detox diets, uh, they can really, there's a lot of variety when it comes to them. Um, before we start talking into or get into too much detail about the detox diets, uh, I do want to say first off that um, doing a detox is not a medical therapy, so it's not something that's evidence-based or it's not something that's recommended by doctors or dietitians. Um, there's this idea that we have these toxins in our body that are building up and that uh, our body needs help getting rid of them, and that's actually not true. Our body is perfectly capable of getting rid of any toxins that our, our body encounters. I feel like it's been doing it for hundreds of years before the detox diets came out, right? Yes, it has. <laughs> it has gotten really good at what it does. So so when we talk about these detox diets, I do want to emphasize that as we go, that there are different, different um, recommended ways to do them. But... Uh, ultimately, it's not going to be that beneficial for your health. If it's something that you want to try, it's probably fine to try it, but really it's not going to give you any uh, real benefit. Sure. Well, you know, I think sometimes we go um, through crazy times, maybe the holidays or you go on vacation and you just put all the stuff in your body that mm -hmm. you normally don't, don't or that you normally don't eat. And then you come back and you say, oh, I need to detox. Is that kind of a time, though, where maybe it makes sense to maybe just put all healthy stuff in your body? Yeah. Yeah. You, if you do it that way, I mean, that because that's not like a specific. I mean, I know the way that you say it is. I need to detox now. And but then that's fine to think about it that way. But yeah, it's just like going back to eating uh, whole foods most of the time, eating uh, less sugar, less alcohol, um, and just trying to have more um, more nutritionally dense foods on a regular basis. A little so, balancing. <laughs> yeah. And so if you use detox in that way, I think that's a great way to do it. Is But the, the detox diets where it's like, you know, you're only drinking juice or you have a lot right. of supplements that you're taking, that, that those kind of things aren't uh, medically recommended. Well, you said, you know, our body is pretty good at doing it. What is the natural detoxification of our body? Is that the kidneys? Is it what, what, what is it doing? Um, yeah, so it's the kidneys, it's the liver, it's the lungs. They're all really great at getting rid of uh, any type of toxins that our body encounters. Um, mostly they will break them down into different molecules so that our body can manage them and then get rid of them. Got it. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Well, what kind of toxins are our bodies getting rid of when it is detoxifying, I guess is the word, right? Is it just the think like what I don't know I don't even know what those words are when people say you know detox what does yes. that mean so actually that's a really good question um and and it is really confusing and it's it's actually meant to be confusing so people that promote detoxes um they always talk about these these very vague sounding toxins and so they don't identify them they don't say um what they do like what kind of harm they're causing and that's all very purposeful because like I said it's kind of a, a made-up problem so when we talk about like detoxing these toxins there there aren't any toxins. That's why no one ever names them. That's why it's so confusing. Right. They might say um, they cause these certain symptoms, but they'll never say what they're actually doing. So that's okay. something to just pay attention to when anyone starts talking about a detox, if they're trying to sell you pills or products, mm -hmm. just see what do they actually say? Because they'll pretty much just say toxins and leave right. it at that. Right. Yeah. Well, when we hear we hear detox, but we also hear cleanse. Is yes. that the same thing? Um, most of the time, yeah, because it's, it's still that same idea of, of like, purifying your body, getting rid of harmful substances. So most of the time those words are used interchangeably. Got it. 
And what do you, when we say clean eating, is that better than a quote unquote cleanse? Um, <laughs> in a way it is. Um, so generally clean eating, uh, the way that people use it, it doesn't mean that they're trying to cleanse their body or get rid of toxins. It just means that they're trying to focus on um, eating more nutritionally dense foods. Mm -hmm. um, there's not clean eating is almost uh, it's kind of like a lifestyle mm -hmm. now. A lot of people that say that they are clean eating, it's almost like they're um, it's this like lifestyle that they're following. Um, usually, what it means is that they're uh, cutting out like alcohol, sugar. Um, caffeine. Sometimes people take it a step further and they'll cut out like gluten and dairy. Right. And there's no real reason for them to cut those out, but they've just probably read online that it, it would be a good idea for sure. them to do it. Um, so that's, that's usually what the clean eating means. Uh, I don't love that terminology just because um, it, it gives a sense of like there's good foods and there's bad right, foods. Right, right. Yeah, and that's not really the way it is. You know, there's not good food, there's not bad food. It's just, it's all food. Um, and thinking about it in that way, it's almost, it's like it adds a sense of morality around food. Right. Like yeah. we don't have enough issues with food, right? Exactly. It brings up so much baggage around mm -hmm. eating when really eating is just, or food is just nourishment. It's just nourishing your body. Yeah. And so people start to think like, if I'm eating clean, then I'm a good person. If I'm not eating clean, I'm a bad person. Right. And that just, it's so much stress for people. We have so much to deal with in I life. Know. Let's not, let's not do this. Let's not add it. <laughs> well, are there certain things at a grocery store that are quote unquote natural detoxifiers? Like I know people say that if you drink green tea, that sometimes mm -hmm. is helpful and pure. Are there things we can do that are kind of, good for our bodies? Um, really, the best thing you can do is eat more fruits and vegetables. Oh, okay. That's really the, the uh, Americans in general do not eat enough fruits and vegetables. So any way that you can get more either fresh or frozen, even canned, if you really um, have uh, storage issues where maybe you don't have access right. to a freezer or you can't uh, store fresh produce, then canned is just as good. But ideally, you want to get the fresh or frozen ones. So if you are, say, though, looking at canned, are there ingredients, say I'm at the grocery store, I'm shopping with you, right? Because mm -hmm. we're going to do that next. Um, what should I be looking for on the back of the can? Uh, well, is it the salt? Is it the sugar? Is it the, is it in water versus oh, syrup? For, can, for canned food yeah. specifically? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, for canned vegetables, you would want to look at the amount of sodium. Okay. Um, and uh, I don't know that there's a, there's not really a specific amount that you should look for, but maybe just compare the cans mm -hmm. and see which one has the lowest option or the lowest amount of sodium. Uh, when it comes to f uh, canned fruit, you want to look at the amount of sugar because a lot of times they are canned in syrup. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's yeah. mainly what you would look for. Is it also kind of looking at what is the first two or three ingredients? Like if it's not a fruit in the first three ingredients, probably not the best canned fruit, right? <laughs> Po probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, you mentioned that we don't really need to detox. I assume then that you don't actually recommend detoxing to anybody who comes to see you. No, 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 I don't. Um, if anyone, I, people, so when patients come and see me, there are a few that do ask about it. I haven't met anyone who um, was, you know, hell bent on getting it, on, on mm -hmm. doing a detox. Um, usually I'll try to help them figure out why they want to do a detox. So maybe they are having some kind of symptoms or maybe they're worried about their energy levels and they're thinking a detox will help right. with that. And so then we can talk about um, what else could help them accomplish right. their goals. Right. Like what else would be a little bit more beneficial? Maybe they're not getting enough iron. Maybe they're not getting, I mean, it could just be that they're not eating a balanced meal in general. Yeah, it could be that they're not getting enough sleep or they're very stressed. And so we want to look at yeah. all those areas and see what's going on. So let's say, though, that somebody is hellbent on, yes. on doing a detox. <laughs> should they go to the doctor first? What, sh what, what, should, they, what should they think about? Um, yeah, so if they wanted to talk to their doctor about it or talk to their dietitian about it, that would be really beneficial. Um, for the most part, doing some kind of a detox is not really – it's not going to be harmful. So if they really want to try it, then that's fine. They can try it. But just um, maybe talk to their doctor or dietitian so that they can get their expectations um, to an acceptable level or to, you know, where right. they're not going to be disappointed when they don't get these, these, uh, results that are promised. What about the, like the Hollywood diet ones or the ones that are like you drink cayenne pepper yeah. or lemon juice and honey or whatever, but that's all you do for yes. like three days that can't possibly be healthy. No. And that's, um, so that's the master cleanse. Yeah. And I believe it first came out in the 1940s and I remember it was hearing, old Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. And I remember hearing that Beyonce did it. Uh, yeah. that's how she lost all the weight for dream girls, I think oh, is what geez. I read. Okay. <laughs> so it, so it, there, it, was, it was very popular for a while and then it just became more popular once Beyonce sort of endorsed it. Sure, sure. Um, you know, if you follow a diet like that for a couple of days, it's 
probably not going to um, cause any harm, any real harm. It's but it's like fasting, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're still getting some calories. Um, but, you know, if you do it for weeks at a time or months at a time, you might start getting some nutritional deficiencies. Yeah. So something to watch out for. I saw it in uh, a GNC or something recently, and I looked at the back, and it said, like, I don't remember how many times a day it was, but it was, like, for two days. And then there was another one. And then there was one for four weeks. And I was like, who can do that for four yeah. weeks and not eat? Like, oh, that's, no. No. That's yeah, okay. I wouldn't. I mean, I personally would not be able no. to. Oh, I can't <laughs> even go two food. days. You know, the one I saw recently, too, was the Hollywood cookie diet or something where you just ate cookies <laughs> every day for three days. I was like, okay, now that one sounds appealing. <laughs> But they can't possibly be healthy. No. Oh, I could do that one. <laughs> but they're all processed cookies. Like, they just doesn't, it doesn't look good. Mm-hmm. Um, well, a lot of people say if they detox, they lose weight. Yes. Is that a myth? Um, no. I, it, it is possible to lose weight if you're detoxing. Uh, but that just comes down to the amount of calories that you're eating. And it's just you're just taking in less calories. Yeah. So you'll probably, uh, you know, if you do it for a couple of days, weight loss will be very minimal. If you do it for a couple of weeks to like the four weeks, yeah. you probably will lose a significant amount of weight. But then, you know, once you start eating regular food, it'll probably come back on pretty quickly. Sure. A lot of it would be water weight, I would think too, maybe. Some of it could be. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you're not eating anything at all, then right. that could be some water weight. But a lot of it is just you're barely getting any calories on a regular basis. I think you'd be hungry all the time. Then I think I would overeat later. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, so when we hear detox, we hear detox in the form of drinks or juices or mm-hmm. patches even. I've seen the ones where you put them on your feet. Yes. What's the deal? Yes. That, that's one of my, um, <laughs> that product is one of my, not my favorites, but that's the one that I find the most amusing. Um, and actually one of my college professors when I was in, uh, in my undergrad, she brought that up as something that we should watch out for. She was very um, intent on talking about uh, nutritional scams, I guess, right. or mm-hmm. products that are presented to people as legit products when really they don't do anything. Right. And yeah, so those patches, you're supposed to put them on the bottom of your feet while you're sleeping, and they're supposed to pull out like heavy metals and toxins. <laughs> and they're just they're just not, they're not real. It's right. not really doing anything. They're just, uh, it's a way for people to make money. So there are a lot of products like that out there. I've always seen like they, I've seen the commercial for that and they pull it off and there's like all this like tar looking stuff. I'm like, I can't imagine that's coming out of my feet. I really can't. Yeah. And I think that they did a test where um, they just put water on it and just let it sit and it looked the same the (gasps) next day. Wow. So So it's not. So they just prefabricate. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's, it might just be like sweat or it could just be, that's just what happens. It just changes color over time. So it's not really toxins that are getting pulled onto the adhesive. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to continue talking about juicing, detox diets, and all of the fads. Stand by me 
we're back with Shop With Your Doc. I'm your host, Mary Renoff, and I'm here with clinical dietitian Christine Straparo, and we are talking about juicing and detox. So one of the questions we got said, I just quit smoking. Will a detox slash cleanse help clear out my toxins from all the years of smoking? That is such a great question. And also congratulations to that person who right, quit rocking smoking. It. Yeah, yeah, that's really hard to do. Um, I have so many patients who are struggling with quitting. Um, so, so, okay, doing a detox won't affect the lungs. It won't make the lungs heal quicker. Um, the lungs are actually a self-cleaning organ. And so if they, uh, basically just not having the cigarette smoke is going to make the biggest difference. Yes. So just not smoking anymore will help the lungs start cleaning themselves. Um, also getting regular exercise is going to keep those lungs healthy so that they can do those cleaning processes. So detox isn't going to make a difference with that, but like really congratulations on yeah. quitting. Kudos. <laughs> Well, you just mentioned exercise, and one of the questions we had was, can I still exercise during a detox? And I guess it would depend on how much you're eating, that sort yeah. of thing. Um, most of the people that I have talked to who have done some sort of like detox or juice cleanse, they say that it's really hard to exercise when they're on it, um, just because they're not getting enough calories. So they're not, they don't have a lot of energy and they just don't have a lot of energy to spare on exercising. Yeah. So it, it's very, it's varied as person to person, but it could be very challenging to exercise. Sure. Well, I think the one most of us see in pop culture is the detox tea, right? And you see like the oh. Kardashians pitching that, which I think is interesting too, because uh, I think her name is Jamila, Jamil or whatever. She's on a couple of TV shows. She's been very vocal lately in social media about calling them out on this is a bunch of bunk. Yes. And you're getting young girls to A, spend a lot of money that yeah. you're getting profit from and it's not doing any good and then maybe even harming them. Is is that, I mean, do you see that a lot? Um, you mean with uh, people promoting yeah. products that yeah. are, oh, definitely. Because it's just about making money for companies and so mm -hmm. they just want to promote the product that they have and get people to buy it um, and so that's why they use those like we were talking about before those vague sounding terms right. so like toxins they'll just say you know intuitively it sounds right it sure. sounds like there probably are toxins especially since we're worried about pollution and we're worried about chemicals in our food we're so putting all this processed food in our bodies right? yeah mm -hmm. so it's kind of like on an intuitive level it makes sense that if you hear someone saying you're getting you're putting all these toxins in your body your body needs help getting rid of them in some ways that can make sense. And if you don't know any better and you see a product that's supposed to help with that process, right. then you're like, well, yeah, let me get that. And especially if you see a celebrity that's pretty right, well known right. endorsing it. Yeah. Well, cause you like to think that they would do the research and they would only endorse things that yes. they know to be true, but, yes. mm -hmm. but that doesn't happen. Not always the case. Not always. No. Most no. of the time, probably not. <laughs> well, let's talk about juicing cause juicing fascinates me and I actually have tried it. Um, oh, okay. I've done the vegetable side. I've done the fruit side. Mm -hmm. um, I want to know though, is is juicing good for you? Is it bad for you? Is it how many days? I know it's a very vague question. Yes. So doing a juicing fast for a couple days probably isn't going to cause any harm. Um, like we were saying, you're not going to be getting a lot of calories. You're not going to be getting a lot of protein. You're not going to be getting a lot of fiber. You're not really going to be getting any fat. So all those nutrients you're going to be missing out on. If you do it for a couple of days, that should be fine. If you do it for a couple of weeks, that's when you start running into trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing to think about is when you juice, uh, especially if you're doing juicing and not like a smoothie, when you juice, you're getting you're taking all the liquid out of the produce and you're leaving all the fibrous material. All the good stuff, right? Yeah, you're leaving that all behind, and so that's the stuff that's really good for us and really helps with um, with uh, is really beneficial to our health. Um, and then also it's very wasteful, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I remember yeah. one of my friend, uh, one of my friends was juicing and I, we looked at her juicer after the fact and there's all this pulp all around mm -hmm. the outside. And I was just thinking like, well, you could have eaten that and right. been full for yeah. days. Right, <laughs> put into a soup or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, but a question too is what about pressed juices? Because those are, if, if I'm not mistaken, those are supposed to actually keep the pulp in, right? Mm, I'm not oh, sure. Actually, I don't, I don't know what because we hear a lot are. about pressed versus not. And what my bigger question though about juicing is, I my quote unquote diet, right, which is really let's eat healthy, mm -hmm. right, and calorie restrictions and all that. Juices have so many calories, and I know it's natural sugar, but yeah. should we be worried if we're juicing that all we're getting is extra calories that we wouldn't have been eating normally? Um, it it depends. So if you are taking if you're drinking juice in addition to eating your regular meals, then yeah, it would be extra calories. Um. And when you were asking about the sugar content, mm -hmm. so it is it is natural sugar, right? Because fruit does have, and some vegetables, they do have natural sugar. Um, but it's a very concentrated form of it. Because if you think about, you know, it takes maybe four or five oranges to make one glass of orange right? juice. Yeah. You could drink that orange juice really quickly. You know, you could drink that in like 
a a minute. (laughs) Yeah, it's like a shot of orange juice. But if you had to sit there and eat five oranges, that would take you a lot longer. And so it would give your body more time to digest and absorb the sugar. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, do you know, have you looked into any of like the the juice delivery services where you get like the three days, the five days for like $150? Yes, they're very expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually um, didn't realize until a while ago that that was such a a booming industry. And actually, I read that it seems to be dying off a little bit because people are going more for the um, uh, food cleanses Mm -hmm. like instead of doing a juice cleanse they're doing more like the whole 30 diet and so that they're it's still a keto so much keto let's not get into keto yeah no we don't want to do it we're not recommending keto that'd be a whole nother podcast Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) um yeah so the i have looked into some of them they are very expensive but it does seem like um at least from what i was reading the sales of their juicing cleanses specifically are dropping off a little bit Mm -hmm. as people are becoming more interested in eating whole foods so if I was to go to the grocery store, though, and I'm looking at juices, I know that there are pre-made juices. There's lots of companies yeah. that do that. And there's even fr- frozen ones, right? Are there some that I should be looking at or things that I should be avoiding? Uh, honestly, we don't really need juice. So if you are looking for juice, I would say get the fruit instead mm-hmm. or get the vegetables instead. Um there are people that maybe, like we were saying before, don't have access to refrigeration mm-hmm. or maybe they don't have a lot of access for storage. And so juice would be a good way for them to get some of those vitamins and minerals. Um, if you're looking for a juice, you want to look at the ingredients in the label and just see what the actual ingredients are and see if the first ingredient is sugar or if the right. first ingredient is apple juice. Because then you know that it's actually apple juice and right. doesn't have the, the added sugar. What about the mixed ones where you get like cranberry, apple, whatever? Is that better for you because you get more berries or not? Uh, it's about the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it's all just juice. What about the natural? Um, I hear a lot about how kale is a detoxifier or it's an antioxidant. or I don't even know what the difference is, yeah. to be honest. What, wait, what is an antioxidant? So the antioxidants, um, they help uh, with the oxidative, either preventing or slowing down the oxidative damage that happens to our cells. And so they can help preserve cells a little bit, but it kind of gets, um, so it's helpful to have them in our diet, but mostly they're found in fruits and vegetables. And so eating a variety (laughs) of fruits and vegetables will give you a lot of the antioxidants. So is something like kale, is that a superfood? Is that really good for quote unquote detox? Um, it's great to eat. Yeah. I, for a detox specifically, I don't know if it would really make that much of a yeah. difference, but yeah, for uh, eating kale is great. Eating spinach is great. They both have a lot of nutrients. So what I'm hearing you say is we don't need to detox and maybe we should eat fruits and vegetables. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the main message. I hear it. I hear it. <laughs> well, um, What do you recommend, though, if somebody says, I I do want to do juicing? Is it kind of what you're saying, like find a juice that's definitely made out of fruits and not sugars? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. If, I mean, if you can make your own, actually, you know what I would say? If someone really wanted to do juicing, I would try to talk to them about doing smoothies instead. Okay. Because then you're still getting all the fiber and all the flesh from the fruit. Um, so it's going to fill you up more and it's not going to spike blood sugar as much. Got it. Um, so it's just going to be more filling and less wasteful. So, and then the other thing I would say is if you're going to make a smoothie, do more vegetables than fruit. Okay. So you don't want to do a smoothie that has like three cups of fruit and then one cup of kale. Got it. You'd want to do more vegetables than fruit in the mix. Well, and if you're going to put the berries and the sweet fruits in there, I feel like you can hide some of the other stuff maybe you wouldn't want to eat, like a beet or carrots or something like that. Yeah. And even, you know, when it's all blended up, sometimes you don't really taste the different ingredients and it all comes together pretty nicely. I can throw in those bitter vegetables that I don't typically like. (laughs) (laughs) And especially the greens, you don't really, you don't really taste them. At least I don't. When I make a smoothie, if I put in like two cups of spinach, I never really taste it because like you said, the berries cover that taste. So we've talked a little bit about kind of frozen versus fresh. Is there anything I should worry about if I'm buying frozen vegetables or frozen fruits from an ingredients list? I'm going through the grocery store. What am I putting in my cart? Yeah. So for the most part, frozen produce is great. Um, What you can look at again is the ingredient list on the back. And so if it's, you know, if it's frozen broccoli and it just says ingredients broccoli, then that's all that's in there is broccoli. There's sometimes where it might say broccoli salt. Um, but that's very, um, that's not very common, but if it does say salt in there, that means they added salt. And so look for the bag that just says broccoli. And then the same with fruit. Um, it might say strawberries or it might say strawberries and then comma sugar or another word for sugar. And so if you pick the one that just says strawberries, you're, it's just strawberries. There's nothing else added in there. So it's just as nutritious. So another word for sugars then, is that like fructose or I mean, yeah, fructose or like honey or like, um, uh, brown rice syrup. Uh, 
times. Ooh, what's the agave honey situation? Like I hear people saying that's better for you. Is it? Um, no. So, so all <laughs> the <We're> debunking <laughs> left and right here. <laughs> all the sugars are basically the same. So there's like the um, agave nectar, and there's honey, and there's brown rice syrup, and there's maple syrup, and then there's just sugar. Uh, they're all sugar. If you look at the nutritional information, the uh, grams of sugar, the grams of carbohydrates are pretty much the same in all of them, and they all your body responds to them all in the same way. So the really the biggest thing is just having less of them. So it doesn't matter which one, just have less of them. Okay, makes yeah. sense. Well, when we talk about kind of like the juices that come to you prepackaged, or even if like the Jamba juice you see in the frozen food section, yeah. a lot of them also come with quote immune boosters or like <laughs> little 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 bottles of whatever. Uh -huh. Are those beneficial? Do we need those? Uh, probably not. It's probably like a shot of vitamins. Mm -hmm. It's you know like mm -hmm. a liquid vitamin or maybe like a liquid multivitamin. Um, it it's possible it could be beneficial, um, but but if you're getting a shot of it into a smoothie, then the whole smoothie itself might not be beneficial just because there's so many calories and so much sugar. So if you really wanted to have extra vitamins, just take a, a multivitamin. Got it. Okay, so let's let's picture this. You and I are going through the grocery store, and mm -hmm. I said, "Hey, I want a detox," and you said, "No, you don't." And I said, "Hey, I want a juice," and you said, "No, you don't." Uh -huh. Where are we going? What aisle are we going to? And what are we putting in the cart? Because I want to eat a healthy, balanced meal. Gotcha. So we would definitely spend a lot of time in the produce section. Okay. So looking at the vegetables, looking at fruit. Um, really, it's trying to figure out how you can have ideally have vegetables with every meal mm -hmm. um and then or breakfast sometimes it's hard for people to get vegetables in so having fruit with oh, vegetable yeah. or um, fruit with breakfast um so a lot of time in the produce section um we would probably go get some eggs we would probably get some uh, oh wait let's stop right there oh okay eggs is a good one because first we hear we have to eat egg whites then we hear no all the yes. nutrients in the yolk walk me through this so it used to be thought that because eggs have cholesterol that the cholesterol in the eggs and the egg yolk would affect our blood cholesterol and so people that had high cholesterol they were told to avoid egg yolks oh, okay um but now we know that that's not the case it's not that much of a direct connection okay. and actually eggs do have a lot of healthy fats and they have a good amount of protein in them um, so they're actually a pretty good source of uh, nutrition. Um, so now there isn't a, a specific recommendation on how many eggs to eat. Most people... Maybe not um, the whole dozen. Yeah, maybe not <laughs> One a dozen sitting. a day. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but it, it has it has changed. And I do get a lot of questions about yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're picking up some eggs. Now we're close to yogurt. Yogurt, walk me yeah, through that. So, Good or bad? So yogurt, for the most part, if it's like plain, plain yogurt is... Mm -hmm pretty good. You can have plain yogurt. Um, Greek yogurt is going to be even better just because it has the higher protein content. Any of the flavored yogurts, it can have a lot of sugar added into it. Uh, so you would want to stay away from those. Although I will say that Chobani has a new um, less sugar option. Mm -hmm. And so that one, it, it's a much less sugar than most of the other flavored yogurts. So that would be a good one to look for. Um, would you put yogurts in with the smoothies when you're making them? For, you could. Okay. Yeah. Put some uh, plain yogurt in. Okay. Yeah, that would help. That would, that helps, uh, um, I guess make give it a creamier consistency mm -hmm. so it's a little bit more enjoyable filling a little bit more filling for yeah. me I, think, I feel like if i look at a juice and it's like eight ounces or something like i'm still hungry yes. i might not be but in my mind i am you might really be too in your <laughs> stomach <laughs> okay so we've hit the eggs we've worked looking at yogurt now we're kind of in the cheese section i can yeah. eat cheese by the way as a meal uh, not as a meal, no. I mean, you it wouldn't be ideal. Having cheese is fine. Um, going for the lower fat options, so like the mozzarella cheeses are going to mm -hmm. be a little bit better for you than the cheddar. Um, it, it's fine to eat cheese on a on a regular basis, but you just it's the amount. You know, you don't want to have a whole block of cheddar. You could have sure. a couple pieces. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, since we've been talking about detoxing, um, and I think a lot of times when we're detoxing, it's because we just finished the holidays or Halloween or whatever, and we've eaten all this candy. Is there anything in that candy and chip aisle that I want or should I just walk right past it? Well, so if you're trying to have a very healthy, balanced diet, you'd probably, you would just walk right past it. <laughs> um, but it's, re you can't, you're not perfect, right? It's impossible to be perfect. Right. I'm definitely not perfect. I love my desserts. So having Girl. desserts, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> having desserts every once in a while is not a problem. It does not make you a bad person. It does not ruin your diet. Um, it's just what is, you know, you just want to think about what are you eating? What's the majority that you're eating? If 80% of what you're eating is really, is whole foods, very nutrient dense. Mm -hmm foods and then 20% is the desserts and the empty calories you I mean you're doing pretty good oh 20% you heard it here no I'm kidding, I'm <laughs> kidding. it wasn't a full recommendation <laughs> well what about nuts because nuts are down that aisle and I struggle with that because I love nuts and I hear that they're good in protein but then I also look at the calories and yeah like, especially trail mix yes yeah, so uh, nuts are great yes a lot of good uh, nutrients 
but they can have a lot of calories. I have a lot of patients who they're trying to lose weight and they're snacking on nuts. And then when we count it up throughout the day, they're really getting like two cups of nuts in a day. Ooh. And that can be about, I think, 800 or 1600 calories. Yeah, calories. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of calories. Um, so they're fine. You, you generally, you want to have a fourth cup por- portion. So that's about the size of an egg. So if you're just eyeballing wow. it, if you have a, you know, Amount it's of nuts? No, it's not very much. <laughs> it's those almonds. They tell us to have a handful of almonds. I'm like, well, you're talking like a lumberjack size handful? Yeah. <laughs> or a baby handful? It's like a palm, a palm a full. Palm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, if is there anything you would say? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to the grocery store. I, maybe I'm not detoxing, but other than fruits and vegetables, is there mm-hmm. any like one thing that you tell people to, to really focus on? Is it high protein? Is it good fats? Um, no, it's more just variety. Uh, I do try to get people to eat a a lot more beans because most, um, Americans don't eat a lot of beans and they have a ton of really great nutrients. They have a ton of, um, fiber. And so those are really good additions. So I'll talk to people about adding beans to their salads, throwing them into stir fries, making chilies and soups with them just so that, cause, um, most Americans don't get enough fiber on a regular basis and beans are a great source of fiber. So would that be like fresh beans though? Like I should go get fresh chick- chickpeas or can I get canned beans? You can do can. Yeah. Oh, you can. Just okay. do can, just drain them and rinse them and they, they work just as well. Is there a better bean? Like, is there a top choice bean? Nah, no, no? just okay. whatever bean you like. <laughs> maybe, not, maybe not refried. No, not refried. And <laughs> and maybe not the um, baked beans. Oh, yeah. Because, oh, yeah. yeah. That's like a barbecue sauce, honey, mm-hmm. molasses, whatever. Yeah. Awesome. And you just plain beans. Awesome. Well, I think we're pretty much almost out of time. Is there any one thing that you would tell people, especially around juicing or detox, other than not to do it and you don't need to? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, everyone everyone can make their own choice about it. So if, so, if you do want to try juicing or detox, that's perfectly fine to do. Um, I would say do it for a couple of days, see how you feel. Um, just just know that you're, it's probably not going to be very beneficial to your health. It's not going to make that much of a difference, um, but it's fine to try it out and see how you feel. Um, and then also I would just say, watch out for any products or supplements that are being sold. Cause mm-hmm. you might end up spending a lot of money needlessly. Sure. So like foot patches. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you, Christine, for joining us today and to everyone for listening and sending in your questions. You can follow PacMed's health experts on Twitter at PacMedWA and on Facebook under Pacific Medical Centers. We look forward to future topics with more experts from PacMed and Providence. Make sure to follow us on social media at PSJH on Twitter and on Instagram and under Providence St. Joseph Health on Facebook. To learn more about our mission programs and services, visit future.psjhealth.org. Thanks for listening.